नमस्कार लेट्स स्टडी सेक्शुअल रिप्रोडक्शन इन फ्लावरिंग प्लांट्स सेक्शुअल रिप्रोडक्शन मीन्स रिप्रोडक्शन टेक्स प्लेस विद द हेल्प ऑफ सेक्स ऑर्गन मेल सेक्स ऑर्गन एंड फीमेल सेक्स ऑर्गन ड्यू टू द इंटर प्ले ऑफ सेक्स ऑर्गन एंड फ्यूशन ऑफ गेमीट्स न्यू ऑर्गेनिजम्स आर प्रोड्यूस्ड इन केस ऑफ एंजियोस पर्म्स और फ्लावरिंग प्लांट्स the reproductive part is called flower in a flower four different sets of floral members are attached to a central axis called thalamus now let's see the structure of flower sepals collection of sepals is known as calyx then petals collection of petals known as corolla male reproductive part is called stamen which consists of anther and filament anther contains pollen grains inside the pollen grains male gametes are present female reproductive part is called pistil or carpel which consists of stigma style and ovary stigma receives the pollen grains and then pollen tube germination takes place pollen tube move towards the ovary through style inside the ovary female gamete or egg cell is present and ovules are also present calyx the outermost and the first accessory whorl is of sepals and is called calyx so what are the functions performed by calyx it protect the flower in bud condition and it is photosynthetic in nature because it contains chlorophyll molecules we know that chlorophyll molecules absorb light energy and helps in the preparation of food when colored it attracts the insect for pollination insects are pollinating agents corolla the second accessory whorl is of petals and is called corolla corolla provide color and scent to attract pollinators provide protection to the plant base of corolla bears secretory glands and secretes nectar and this nectar also attract insect pollinating agents stamen male reproductive part it consists of anther and filament anther produce pollen grains which contains male gametes filament support the anther pistil or carpel female reproductive part it consists of three different regions stigma style and ovary this is female reproductive part here you can see stigma which receives the pollen grains and then pollen tube germination takes place pollen tube move towards the ovary inside the ovary you can see here ovule is present inside the ovule here three cells known as antipodal cells antipodal cells and these two cells are known as polar nuclei polar nuclei and here three cells are present one is a female gamete that's known as x cell and the other two cells are known as synergids these synergids secrete some chemicals which attract the pollen tube towards ovary stigma it receives the pollen grains it has sticky surface and pollen grains get stuck to it during pollination style it connects the stigma with ovary it holds the stigma to receive the pollen grains it is through the style that the pollen tube grows and reach the ovule ovary it is the basal solen part of the pistil that contains ovules and eggs importance of pollen grains it contains male gamete for reproduction these are nutrient rich and these are taken as food supplement pollen grains can be stored for years in liquid nitrogen types of flowers flowers can be classified into two types unisexual flower and bisexual flower unisexual flower means it contains either male or female sex organs for example papaya or watermelon this uh, unis in unisexual flowers cross pollination takes place because uh, these uh, unisexual plants has uh, male flowers and female flowers 
then bisexual flower it contains both uh, male and female sex organs for example hibiscus and mustard here self pollination takes place because the both the male and female sex organs are present on the same flower so exchange of uh, gametes takes place or uh, transfer of gametes takes place in the same flower pollination is very important process in the case of sexual reproduction in plants here transfer of gamete takes place that's a transfer of male gamete that's uh, when pollen grains transfer pollen grains contains male gamete so this is very important process it is the process of transfer of pollen grains from anther to stigma there are two types of pollination one is called a self pollination and other is cross pollination self pollination takes place in bisexual flower because of both male and female sex organs are present on the same flower cross pollination takes place in unisexual flowers self pollination it is the transfer of pollen grains from anther to stigma of the same flower it does not require an external agency for the transfer of pollen grains external agency means pollinating agents like air water and insect it does not bring variation because uh, this process or transfer takes place in same flower genes are all same so there is no variation cross pollination it is the transfer of pollen grains from the anther of one flower to the stigma of another flower it requires an external agency for the transfer of pollen grains from one flower to another flower it bring about large number of variation because uh, flowers are different genes are different so variation takes place and this variation accumulates over generation leads to the formation of new characteristics fertilization in flowering plants in flowering plants or in angiosperms a unique process of fertilization takes place that's known as double fertilization here fertilization takes place twice one male gamete fuses with egg cell to form zygote and it develops to form embryo and another male gamete that fuses with two polar nuclei here you can see the polar nuclei two polar nuclei and one male gamete here triple fusion takes place three nuclei fuse together that's known as triple fusion and the other fusion is one male gamete with the egg cell so here fusion takes place here also two fusion takes place so the fusion takes place twice that's why it's called double fertilization it's a unique process that's only found in angiosperms or flowering plants inside the seed a food storing structure is present that's known as cotyledon which provide nourishment to the developing embryo when seed germinates two structures evolve outside one is called a plumule which form which further form shoot of the plant body and another structure is known as radicle which further form root of the plant body end product of sexual reproduction in plants ovary develops into fruit ovule develops into seed sepals petals fall stone here you can see that number of ovules determine the number of seeds if one ovule is present inside the ovary one seed is produced if more number of ovule is present more number of seeds are produced in case of watermelon number of seed is more so number of ovule is more in watermelon and in case of uh, mango only one seed is present it indicates that the ovary contains only one ovule so this is the whole process of sexual reproduction in flowering plants if you like this lecture fir der kis baat ki meethi meethi taaliyon ke sath like and share ab waqt aa chuka hai subscribe karne ki gandi baja do aur kar do subscribe thanks for watching happy learning and stay connected